but I'm not going to post the slides, right? Can you see my slides? How is silicon carbide process flow different from silicon? Yes. Okay. Now, so here we try this, right? You, this is a simulation, but here I try to show you in silicon carbide and silicon. First of all, the dopant is very different. Silicon use arsenide. Silicon carbide use nitrogen. Nitrogen is a dopant, okay? It's impossible in silicon. It's a donor, right? So here we show that uh, we start with the crystal and then start with nitrogen for silicon carbide, arsenide for silicon, okay? And then we try to grow. You see silicon use 800 degree to grow the epi, but silicon carbide use 1600, okay? So I want to appreciate the energy, the temperature scale, okay? So if you are good silicon en device engineer, you probably want to appreciate silicon carbide is high because it has much higher melting point, okay? So this is a growth, nothing special, but higher temperature. We grow the AP on top of it. We keep increasing the AP. So this is the so-called drift layer, right? Remember we talked about the drift layer? And here just a broad zoom in. Silicon carbide use what? Aluminum as acceptor, impossible in silicon. This is all defect for silicon. Right? Or, or not be fair for aluminum, it basically from the uh, silicide, it becomes a metal when you react with silicon. Silicon use boron, okay? So you do the photolithography, you do implantation, right? Here you implant aluminum, here you implant the boron, okay? And this is just a different step. And then what, after you do implantation, you want to grow, in this case, we want to grow the Oxide, look at silicon, 10 minutes, 1000 degrees C. Kilon carbide need 300 minutes, 1200 degrees C for the same thickness. You see that? After that, they have the same thickness, but this one is much longer and higher temperature. Remember this, all the reaction depends on activation energy. So it go up exponentially with temperature. So 200 degrees C more, is a big deal. I'm going to show you what happened if you apply this to silicon, right? And this is the junction, this form the body. Then we form the poly gates, not very important. Basically we just uh, deposit the gate, right? And here is the gate, here is the source. And then what? A lot source, that is the body, right? And then again, we do the nitrogen implantation. Right, we open it so that we can implant to the center. And again, 18,000, this is more than the melting point of silicon, but we need this for silicon carbide, okay? The point is after activation, you see the junction are similar, even it's so high temperature, right? So this is the source, this is the body. And then we do some passivation layer, etching, uh, we're going to, to uh, going fast, right? And then the final uh, deposition and then contact. So you finally, this is the gate, this is the source, and this is the drain, right? And then the current flow from source through the body to the drain, right? If you still remember, we talked about this demos, okay, before. Any questions about the process flow? My purpose is to give you a feeling that silicon carbide, you see, make the same device. Silicon carbide need much higher temperature. And also it use different type of dopant. Okay, so don't laugh at people. You know, some people say that you, they use aluminum as the dopant in silicon carbide because you're using different material now. Finally, I want to see, right, what if the silicon use the same condition as silicon carbide? Right, I just go very quickly. Like not here. You see that if I use the condition from silicon carbide, you get very thick oxide. And also the dopant are uniform, why? Because they just diffuse like crazy. It's just like in the, in the liquid. It's just everywhere. You cannot form the junction, okay? So that's what all I want to show you.